What's up, guys? This is Joey from The Music These Days. I'm happy to be sitting here with Samran Jude from System House 33. Did I pronounce that name right? That's perfectly right, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, exactly. Joey. Happy to be here. Yeah, I'm glad to have you here. So you're sitting over there on lockdown. Did the tour get canceled because of the lockdown? No, we were fortunate that the, you're probably the only tour that was completed. And literally oh, nice. the next day, everything was like, you know, going crazy. Yeah. Now was it opening for Soulfly? I bet that was badass. Yeah, that was the best thing that could ever happen to us in a way because, you know, we always probably like dreamt about that and the dreams finally came true. Yeah. And this was only your second American tour, you said? That's right. Uh, we toured once before on the Metal Alliance tour where we supported uh, Dying Fetus, Acacia Strain, Jungle Rod, Black Crown on a Shit. Nice. And I'd seen I'd seen y'all. I'd went up to see Soulfly here in, in Tennessee. And and you were you guys were a great surprise to me. Uh, instantly was a fan. And af after your set, I mean you were you were out in the crowd talking to people, just friendly group of guys. Uh, and you know, it is different to see a metal band from India. That's not something you see every day. That's right. Are they, yeah. Are there a lot of metal bands over, over there? Uh, there are a lot of metal bands. There used to be way more earlier, but there still are a few metal bands, especially in Bombay, where we are from. And uh, I'm basically uh, from another city. Uh, the band started off in a city called Nagpur, which is like the center of India, and pretty much where the only, only heavy metal band from there. So when you go to the city like Bombay, you find other bands, like you know the metros like Delhi, Bombay, Bangalore but not so much in smaller cities. Yeah, and I guess it's just a little, it's a little different being in the States because we don't see a lot of Indian metal bands come through. But you guys are definitely metal through and through. Uh, how long has the band been together? So we've been about 17 years right now. 17 and years. Wow. Yeah, it's been crazy. And has it always been the same lineup or has the lineup changed? or? No, we've had different lineup changes depending, you know, on the availability of uh, musicians. And, uh, you know, we started off in 2003 and it was like a few friends that got together uh, from the same area. And right now it's completely different. Like we, we're like uh, musicians that are mainly professional musicians now where we do this more or less full time. Right. And um, I see you're sitting there. Is that your studio? You're working on some some new music, huh? Yeah, we are working on a new album now, which should be released next year. And uh, ironically, today is actually one year of our album, End of Days, which was released on the 4th of April last year. And uh, we started a tour in Europe on the 4th. So, yeah, it's been a year for End of Days, and it feels like the days are ending for some reason. Yeah, yeah, that was a that was a, a fitting title that you named it. You're, it's kind of prolific there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we didn't know that the truth from the book of Revelation would be revealed so soon. You know. I hear you. Is that a is that a dime bag guitar back there? You got? <laughs> yeah, uh, I basically have these dime bag guitars, which are really rare. Some of them from the same custom shop that dime bag basically used to get them made from Chicago. So I love these guitars and I have a small collection, which is pretty good. I use them on all the albums that we write and the guitars really come out there. Right. And you mainly, you know, you mainly see you, see you singing, but you also play guitar on the albums as well, right? Right, yeah. I mainly sing on stage because uh, playing guitar and uh, singing on stage, I did that for a bit and I felt that it, it restricted me to writing like sophisticated parts and parts which are really you know, guitar crazy, like what Dimebag would do, you know? So I want to make sure the guitars are up there. Since we just have like a single guitar player, you know, he can do a lot more than having two guitar players together. And then, you know, we, we just thought it fits better for me. So uh, that's why I only, you know, play guitar on uh, the album on studio and live, you know, it's, it's just going crazy. So I can just sing, you know, I don't want to be restricted by anything else. Exactly. And when you're just singing on stage, you have a lot more freedom to move about. You're not confined just to that mic stand as if you were playing 
and singing. You know, you just seem to be stuck in one spot when that happens. So. Yeah, and I'm hoping one day I can just jump from the stage directly to the crowd and they catch me. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I noticed uh, I noticed on a lot of your live stuff, you guys like to take a lot of uh, selfies with the crowd at the end of the show. And you said to send back to your family. How Did your family support your music? Yeah, I mean, like, uh, my mom, she supports uh, the metal that we play. A lot of relatives support, support it now, at least, not when we started off. And the reason that we take a picture is because, you know, we don't know when we're going to come back to that city. We, we, for us, it's a very, very big deal to play in front of a crowd that, you know, uh, that we've, we've longed for over these 17 years. You know, when we started off, like, say, when I started playing guitar in the year 2000, I was still think of and I used to watch like Soulfly, Sepultura, Pantera, and I was like, wow, you know, playing in front of those like, people going crazy, especially in America, in right. Europe, you know, it, it's it's just magical. And and, I'm, and the reason why we take that picture is because the magic is still alive in, in us, you know, we feel that. So, you know, whenever I look at that picture, like back, say Johnson City, maybe I can see you in the crowd and it, it'll bring back a memory to me that, that I don't want to forget. So Thank it's you. it's mainly you know uh, the connection, the rawness, uh, the organic feeling that we want to keep alive when when you start a band and when you want to play in front of people. It's all about the crowd. It's all about the people that love your music. It's not about you. It's not about how you can play. It's all about how they feel. Uh, you know when they listen to the music that you can play. So I I think that taking that picture is is so much. It just makes everything more real for us, you know, and I'm sure for the crowd as well. Oh, exactly. And, and the, the metal community are a very tight-knit group of people. Like, you know, you go to a metal show, everybody gets along with each other. You know, nobody's really getting getting mad. And everybody's there for one reason, and that's for the metal, you know? Yeah, I think they're the best crowd you can find because right now when we toured America, it was just, like, so amazing. Like, we never even feel so good in our own country. Uh, not because the metal is, you know, dead here, literally, but it's it's like, you know, when, when you meet people who have probably listened to metal for all their life and, you know, supported with everything that they have, you know, they buy your merch, you know, when we took that picture, there's so many people sharing it, they were excited, they came, took pictures with us later on, there's so much interaction and, and so much uh, you know, more spirit and soul involved, and just because of music, you know, that's what we want to do, that's what we want to feel, you know, pretty much the most important thing in my life, at least. Exactly, and I know, I know you're a big Pantera fan, and obviously Soulfly, uh, what's some of the other bands that influenced you coming up before you started playing? Well, uh, one of the first bands that actually brought me into uh, metal was Firehouse, that's why you you can you know say that the bad system house comes out from okay I, yeah i listened to a lot of punk as well like blink 182 was really heavy on me initially when i was just getting into you know extreme music and then it went when i listened to pantera i was just like locked down and i saw uh you know their videos and i was like this is something else and the energy is sepultura and you know soulfly slipknot you know, all these bands were just like, they connected to me at another level, which actually made me feel like doing this forever. Like at that time when I had no job and not even finished my school in college, and you know, I knew that I can't stop doing this. This is going to be part of my life. And when you get that feeling so strong, you know, it, it, it changes your life. So for me, these bands like Pantera, Sepultura, Soulfly, Slipknot, you know, Slayer, Firehouse, they, they just did it for me. They just changed, they just flipped. It was a switch that flipped in my brain, and I was like, life's different now. Yeah, it definitely shows, especially in your live sets. I mean, you guys definitely blew me away. <clears throat> you know, I went up there for Soulfly, and I came back with, with another favorite band as well. Uh, and I'm sure that happened to y'all a lot going through, like, all the different cities. You probably picked up a lot of new fans, I'd say, along the way. Yeah, I mean, thank you so much. That's really kind of you. Really appreciate that. And, you know, for the support. And every city that we went on to, like, you know, the minute we were like, okay, you got to start a circle point and start, it was brutal, you know. Like, I remember one show in Stanhope, it was a sold-out show. And 
it was like I didn't expect it to get that crazy. I saw like shoes flying, people flying, beer on the floor, and people were so like you know excited, and they were just like they they felt the energy, you know, and and it it just it was like contagious after that. Every show we we were like just getting the same feeling from the crowd, and and you know. I didn't think it was more word of mouth or, you know, people watching the stuff or, you know, knowing there's a band from India. It really worked for us. And since, you know, a Max is from Brazil and like where, I, where I'm from in Bombay, like I have like Portugal roots as well because of my great grandmother. Uh, you know, my grandmother was going. So, you know, there was a lot of similarities in the sound, in the in the genre, in the way. Uh, the music is so people really connected to it, and it, it was just unreal, you know. Like a lot of people hung out with us right till the end, till like 4 a.m. and sometimes even 6 a.m. You know, and it, it was just it was just so special for us. And and a lot of cities, like you know, people came to us and they bought like a lot of merch, bought our CDs. We were like sold out two shows before the tour could get done. Oh, nice, and that's good because you know a lot of a lot of bands rely on that merch to get them through. You know, <clears throat> yeah. I mean, it 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 just shows you know when your merch gets sold and people are actually supporting you with with the real money. You know, you know people can tell you you know yeah great and you sound awesome, but if they don't buy your city or they buy your t shirt, it's just sad. You know, it's not yeah. it doesn't have meaning to it. So you know it's really special that you know uh, the, the this, the feedback and the love that we got from people was not just uh, what they said, it was even their actions, you know, actions speak louder than words and they really, really made us feel really good, you know, and it was just, even till now when I think about it, I, I'm just still living on the tour, I'm still not yet out of the zone, I'm just feeling like I can think of every city, I can remember people I've met, I can remember the, the time on stage, I can remember the time we spent with Max and everybody else from Soulfly and Toxic Holocaust. And it's it's just flashes coming in when you go to bed. Probably that's not keeping me uh, from sleeping and that's why I'm awake till in the morning. <laughs> right, I hear you. And uh, so how many total albums do y'all have out at the moment? So actually if you go to see, we've got six of five. Yeah, we've got like albums right from 2006. We released uh, up to 2012, but th we didn't have them on like the internet and, and like you know it's it's not out there. We have like three albums right now, everywhere on the internet. But the albums that we had earlier was just like locally sold, and uh, uh, you can say like you know uh, since we didn't really tour and get out there with our music. It was just based out of in India, you know. So when we started touring in 2015, with like Six Feet Under was our first tour with, that's when we actually got our albums and made copies, got it online for sale, and, uh, you know, uh, started getting some momentum for us. Right. And uh, you was telling me earlier some of the places people can go to find your albums if you want to go over that again. So anybody listening can get out there and, and see where to find your music. Yeah, we have iTunes, we have Amazon, uh, we have CD Baby. We also have our own uh, shop on systemmouse33.com where we have all our merch. You can buy our album from there. We can also send you like an M you know, MP3s which you can buy off from our store. So that's the best place because we don't have to share revenue with any uh, you know, other distributor out there. Uh, but Spotify and like the others, iTunes is, is most popular for us. And of course, you're you're all over social media as well. <clears throat> yeah, we're on uh, Facebook and Instagram. That's that's our main core, you know, social media. And uh, we post a lot of videos and pictures that we take on the tour. Awesome. And with everything, the state of the world right now, I'm noticing everybody's going to doing some sort of live stream show. You guys planning on that? It would be a loud one, I know. Uh, I don't know if I should say this or not, but in India, if anybody gets out right now, they're probably beaten by the cops, like badly. <laughs> right, really? Yeah, like so someone's... You guys, you guys can't even get together yourselves to do anything, huh? I can't get out of the house, like, 
today I went out to just get something like after 22 days, literally. And, uh, you know, it, it's, it's very chaotic here. You know? It's not like, like, a, like any other place I know. It's like, I've seen videos. If you just search online, you see people in India getting beaten up by the cops for getting out and some died too. Oh, getting wow. By the cops, you know, so it's, it's really scary. And, uh, like, you know, in India, the testing is very low. Like, this, this, the, the rules, uh, are, even if there are rules, and not many follow them because uh, the population is really high and, and people are very, like, you know, fanatic about religion and, like, there were, like, mosques open and, like, temples open where people were still going in when the whole country was in the lockdown. So that's why the cops are actually beating people up. And it's better now. It's a little more calmer, but it's risky, you know. I think after nine in the night, if you go, it's, you're definitely going to get beaten up. So, uh, and we're like at a stage where we just had like not too many deaths. Like it's just about 70 deaths uh, that I saw last time. But we don't even know that's really the actual figure. So nobody really knows what's going on. But... But it's going to that stage where it's going to increase now. You know, the curve is going to be like higher, like you see in America, in the UK, in Italy, in France. It's so sad that's happening, and it, it's it's when uh, you know things like that start in a different country. You know, people realize that oh, you know, shit's going crazy. I think we're going to be in that phase in in a couple of days. I think the last I heard was three hundred people. Uh, got the virus, you know. Mm. That could be three thousand, because eighty-five percent of India's villages, where they're barely hospitals, you know, barely homes that are strong. Who? What about them? You're only talking about the fifteen percent that probably have money to pay for their medical service, you know. And right. uh, I last I heard in some areas where, like the poor, uh, you know, areas of society. Uh, people were actually, someone died and they went to check on the family if they've got the virus, they actually beat up uh, the medical care workers. Wow. Yeah, they actually beat them up. There are videos where the medical care workers, they, they're just like doctors and nurses were running and people are throwing chairs and stones at them. It's wow. as opposed to being in a riot. It's going to be like, they're going to be riots for sure because People, you know, I mean, in hospitals and all, can you believe that? I, I just saw on the news, uh, doctors are taking care of patients and the patients are spitting on them. Mm. So that, in India, it's very scary right now. You don't want to go it. out because you don't know what's going to happen to you. Well, I definitely don't blame you for staying in the house after hearing how it's going over there. Um <clears throat> and like you say, I think it's all it's gonna get worse before it gets better, that's for sure. Yeah, it's it's really sad that, you know, something like this is happening and you know, which is taking everything down. People are losing their jobs, people are getting sick, you know, people are they don't know what to do, they're helpless, you know. Suicides are on the rise. People, you know, after losing their jobs, they won't have money for food and I mean, in America, Europe is still better. They are developed economies. What about the poor countries? You know, you can't even think about it. And more or less, most people don't even think about it. Right. And so so your bandmates, they're all in the same area as you? or? Uh, yeah, pretty much close by. I speak to them. But uh, more or less, everybody's in the lockdown. Maybe the only reason they go out is to get some groceries. And mm -hmm. just like in India, it's only the focus is on food. Where are you going to get your next meal from for the most part of the society? And, you know, people that are well off and can afford food still are finding it hard to get it. And uh, there are lines outside. Like today when I went to get food, like bread and eggs and stuff, there were like big lines, like, you know, where it's supposed to be a lockdown, but then this is the only reason people are going out for. And... Uh, it's it's hard, you know. You you, and if the lockdown continues, it's going to get even more crazy for everybody. Oh, definitely. And uh, my, definitely, my thoughts are with you over there, man. It definitely sounds like 
a, a lot rougher situation than what we have over here, but I'm sure it's going to get rougher over here for us as it goes on as well. <clears throat> yeah, it's, it's a bold, uh, you know, battle that everyone's facing, and it's it's different for a different country depending on their situations financially and, you know, the way the government deals with things. But, I mean, I feel, I mean, uh, even though I'm not supposed to say all these things, and we literally wrote an album about it, and I had like band members leave the band because they were scared. We have a song called Detestable Idolatry. Because in India, you get killed for this kind of stuff. You can't right. stop against the government or religions here. Maybe in America, you can do it, but not in India. And uh, we still did it because we, we don't like, we're not like fake people. We just say what we feel, you know, what is right. And uh, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's really scary right now in this situation. And, Especially with what we wrote in the album, End of Days, is like, you know, it's just living it now. It just feels like, uh oh, <laughs> we told you, we said that these things are going to come now and it's upon us, you know. So it's, it's just that you got to be calm and you got to do the right things for in your range, which you can do, because right now you can just sit in a lockdown and probably talk about things, but whatever was in your in your reach to help out or make a difference, like to begin with stay at home, is the only way, you know, that and probably some prayers and some good vibes that you can send out through your window. There's nothing else you can do. And uh, I just, you know, hope that the people that are in power and like especially, you know, medical staff, doctors, these guys are like, imagine like being exposed with a hundred feet. I spoke to a doctor today. He's my friend from school and he's like, there are 200 people around me with, with the coronavirus, and I'm like shivering literally. And I'm like, yeah. that's scary. And he's like, yeah, it's, it's scary because I've never been in this situation. I'm like, I just finished a 24 hour, uh, like, you know, a full shift, which is 24 hours I've not slept. And it's not even started in my city. He's telling me that. So I don't know what. To, you know, what courage they need because we're not, you know, we are not in that situation to know what courage you actually need to go through that. It's just when you live it, you can know. So those are the real heroes, you know, we should be nice to and give them whatever, you know, we can in, in terms of positive energy because if they give up, we're doomed. Right, exactly. And I'd say the healthcare workers, doctors, all the healthcare professionals, it, they're putting themselves right on the front lines, like you say, to be surrounded by so many people with the virus, and you're right there in the middle of it. I know that's a scary situation for them. Uh, <clears throat> and like you said, we just do all we can to support everybody out there, and, you know, hopefully this thing will be done within a year or so, at least, you know? Yeah, I mean, it's we can just hope for the best, but we still are learning, I guess, you know, even doctors and you know, people in the profession of medical are still figuring it out because, you know, it takes time to understand, you know, you know, science and medical, uh, you know, stuff to, to understand how to beat these kind of things. It's, it's not an overnight thing. It's a lot of, uh, you know, uh, research and a lot of uh, hours put in, which right now I'm sure they are doing, but it's, it's going to be hard. It's not going to be easier than it was it's it's just that you got to be there for each other that's the only thing now definitely agree with you but you do have a lot of time to write music are you working on new music while you're sitting there yeah <clears throat> actually, we've already written like about six uh, new riffs which are sounding really amazing i mean this is the best things i mean the best stuff we've ever written it it never sounded this good especially when you come back from the tour and you you know, you've got all that energy and you've met like 10,000 people on the road and, you know, you've got so much of input, you know, you need that input to give the output. If you've not got that input, how will you give the output? There's no way, you know, unless it's sent from God above. But when you meet people and when you like interact, you, you learn a lot more. So the full interaction of the tour and, you know, playing with, uh, you know, Max Cavalera, you know, from Soulfly, Sepultura, that's like, I mean, that's the best thing that I can think of that can happen to the band, you know? 
And Max dedicated a song to us every night called Tribe because we finally joined the tribe. I mean, if somebody told me 15 years ago that Max Campbell and I was going to do that to us and to the band, I would be like, whoa, that's like unbelievable, you know, and it happened. We lived it. So it, all that inspiration, all that energy, you know, the experience that we learned on the road with everybody, you know, from SoFly and, uh, you know, you know, Toxic Holocaust, brilliant band as well. We basically are putting all of that into our album now. And if you think, you know, you've heard good music uh, with our previous albums, it's just only going to get better. I can promise you that. Nice. I can't wait. I can't wait for the new stuff. Uh, definitely, I want to encourage anybody out there watching this, if you haven't heard of System House 33, you need to go listen, especially if you're a metal fan. This is metal through and through. Uh, Samron, I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording here in a minute, um, and we'll finish up afterwards. But I appreciate you taking the time to talk with me. And uh, any last words you want to say to the people? Uh, yeah, I want to thank you first for, you know, doing this. It really means a lot to us, you know. I feel good already talking to you, and I um, just want to send good vibes to everybody out there. Like cities that we played in New York, especially right now, it's, I mean, I can't imagine. We had two sold-out shows in New York, and it is, it's just really, uh, you know, everything that, that city is for, I mean, it's all about courage and inspiration. And, and this time, the world needs to give that to them. You know? And I just hope that everybody's safe out there in America. Everybody that we met, you know, just stay safe. Uh, you know, it's just really important to get through this time. And, you know, I want to thank everybody for supporting our music and, you know, you know, buying our merch, buying the album, you know. You know, it truly means a lot to us, and we truly appreciate it. And we'll be back soon with a new album when things are really good, and you know, you're gonna enjoy it a lot more. Awesome. Well, we sure, sure do appreciate your time, and you stay safe over there. And you'll you'll come out of this just fine. We'll all be back. We'll be uh be moshing around together again soon. Yeah. Thanks, Joey. Hey, thanks you. Bye bye. Bye.